Sean Hilsden is the next big thing. Do y'all want to hear about Barkley at all? Most people got the testicle spectacle at the top and stopped to admire what a grand view it is. I just, I just kept rolling. I'm talking into the microphone. I like it. Sponsored by Barbell Shrugged. That's not bad. Oh, before we start, I have, I have to warn you. I'm going to give someone a seizure. Went down Meth Lab Hill. We're actually around mile, I think, 23, 24. Did you barf? Uh, tonight I'm trying something new. It's Mrs. Dash, hot and spicy. It's meal prep, so we'll eat that until I get hungry and then I'll go to the gas station. Make my way down to the prison. Got my bib punched. I don't know how y'all started this idea or this, this, this great idea. Yeah, well, I didn't want to come over here on an empty stomach, and I definitely wasn't going to assume that there would be dinner. We should have snacks. And then made my way to the backside of the prison, which there's a big rock wall, and we had to climb ladders and climb over the wall. If I didn't train with those guys over the summer, Kieran and Brian, there's no way I'd have been able to do Barkley. I usually have Vaughn's cookies, but Wilson keeps eating them all. I totally get that. I was wondering last time, I was like, I wonder what they do with those cookies. How long did you really wonder that? Go around the creek, get down into the drainage tunnel, and actually run through this dark tunnel. I would gauge it probably about 1,500 feet long, maybe. At this point, you didn't really think that you'd need your light. And once you entered, you know, it's too dark. So you just keep going and kind of feeling your way, making sure you don't hit your head. Mm. You have to run 3.05 Three to qualify hours and five for the minutes. Boston Marathon? Yes, yes. Uh, so I did get a PR, but it wasn't the PR I wanted. Got a PR, but it wasn't the PR that I wanted. Is that a normal thing? It is if you're Sean Hilsden. Like, Mr. Hilsden, we'll just let you pay whatever you want. He told Boston Marathon what the qualifying time was going to be. <laughs> I'm going to go run a 305, and then I'm coming to your race. And you know what? Everybody's going to run a 305. That's the new rule. Signed, Sean Hilsden. Tigers bleed on the inside. Oh, wait, that's ninjas. <laughs> All that hard work and, and trying to get somewhere to just makes your knees hurt your your beard game is is high level come out and you're at the base of rat jaw rat jaw was the ultimate testament when i got to the, that point every step up was a, a careful step because my my calves wanted to cramp the inside of my groin wanted to cramp everything was wanting to cramp well if you're an engineer they have to have respect for you for something big hey big timing not one of y'all has been thoughtful enough to ask about my headband and I have mentioned that no less than a thousand times. <laughs> it seems like every conversation I weave into the fact that I volunteered once at the Swamp Sopper, as if like I'm now forever that pardoned from helping right. anyone do anything. <laughs> hey, my car broke down. Swamp Stomper, dude. I didn't know all that. It's because you don't care. You didn't ask. No one cared. Because <laughs> no, you're insensitive. Me. He wasn't appreciative of my first comment reaction when he told me he was dropping. Going to the lake to drown myself. Go into details of what happened in the car after that. He just turned on the heat and sat there and l listened to Justin Bieber on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got in the car and started watching editorial videos on YouTube and I fell asleep. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Brian said, it's all downhill for a few for a few miles, man. Get your legs back under you. Which Brian is always lying. He runs like a 100-mile race with a water, like a legit, like, Ozark Falls water bottle. Everybody that says it's all downhill yeah. is full of crap. I've often thought about creating, like, a Twitter or Instagram account called at mile18, and you just bitch about everything. Sure. I definitely don't train a lot. I usually, signing up for runs and running is my training for running. <laughs> so Boston's always out there for everybody. What Boston. do you mean Boston's out there for everybody? <laughs> it just depends on how, how, how long you want to wait for the age and the time to meet up. But one time you came over with those cookies and I woke up that morning and I took a bite and I spit it out. And then I got up at like 11 and I looked in the box and I put the cookie in my hand and then I put it away. So I asked Amanda if I could throw them away. And then my mom had brought over an activity for Andy to create something and there was cake icing in there. Mm. And so, I love me some cake icing. <laughs> so, oh, man. so I wound up buttering the thing like a brick and then taking another cookie, sticking oh, it on yeah. top of it, eating that. And then I asked I'm Amanda, with, I'm with you. can I throw these cookies away? And she said yes. And so on the way out the door, I'm like buttering yes. another one. Like, yes. Eat all of them. While I'm eating it. Yep. Got my light out, had everything ready to go for the last 10-mile stretch, and went and saw Laz 
right before leaving to go to Chimney Top. And he said, all right, a nice gentle uh, uphill for the next 10 miles or something like that. It was not. It was terribly steep single track. Did you smoke, Vaughn? <laughs> like more than probably anybody that you know. I love cigarettes. I, I think that was Wilson's first trail run, but he intended to run like four miles and then and he got lost and ran like 13. But that's a whole other story. Then they're like, good morning. Yeah, like, here we where, go. Where am I supposed to go? I, I don't know if I was just running around a tree for four and then we were hours done like two hours away. later and we were like, I don't know what to do. He's not back yet. I'm like, my tits have rubbed <laughs> off of my body. They're completely off. Yeah. And I have nothing to drink. And it was awful. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I got left here <laughs> by my dickhead uncle who was wearing the gloves and the goalie gear. So I have... I have huge respect for any soccer player. And not much respect for your uncle. <laughs> yeah, he is a dickhead. There's all these iced cookies and iced muffins from Walmart. I was just, as soon as I walked in and saw them on the counter, I was, I, I didn't act, I tried not to act like I was just super excited about it. I didn't want anybody to know. <laughs> I tried not to draw attention to the cookies. <laughs> but I stared at them the whole Christmas dinner. <laughs> kind of ran into a lot of people that were in the same condition. And you just fed off of each other's misery. And Smoked some cigarettes and bitched. Yeah. Oh, I have the timer going for my fish, so I'll have to get up and get it out of the oven. Yeah, we can't. That's the most important thing right now is the tilapia. I thought you weren't supposed to eat tilapia. I've been eating the shit from tilapia. So I had a Lunchable on the way over here. I mean, it's, it's better than eating like a Big Mac. Uh, I posted on Instagram last night. I was crying because I was so happy. I was. It was just the biggest flood of emotions knowing that I was going to finish. And I was going to finish strong. Is that a buff? What do you call that? I heard you use that word earlier and I really liked it. I, I call it a sweatband. But does it do other things? Yeah, it does all kinds. Of, you're going to have to watch a video. Okay. <laughs> I haven't made the video, but I used someone um, else's video for a reference nice. point. You can rob banks with this thing. No one has beat me since I've been wearing this headband. That includes none of y'all have beat me in a race since I've been wearing this headband. Nobody is going to approach you. Yeah, I'm Body Glide's best customer, by the way. We should probably get together and, uh, and order uh, <laughs> cases of it. Yeah, it sucks for us, but we're out there accomplishing these great personal feats. <laughs> they're not. It sucks for them because they're like feeding a bunch of a bunch of dickheads that don't say thank you when you let them pass. It was. It was at that point in time, man. It was. It was just bliss knowing that you were done. You had accomplished this. To me, Barkley will always be that that race that kind of made me. I still feel like it, there's nothing's going to top it. Were you a smoker? Yes, I was a smoker. Let's talk about that for a second. Because <laughs> I, I would go to work and sit in front of a computer all day, and I'd get up like every 15 minutes and go to the smoke hole and smoke. And bitch. You know, and bitch. <laughs> and be like, smoking and bitching goes together. I love it. But to me, I'm always trying to chase that faster time. I don't know what it is. It's just like a virus or a disease. You just, I'm always after that faster time. I'm undefeated since wearing this headband. The one thing that I can do out here during this race is knock you over. I always get out of the way, and I make it a big, dramatic thing. I'm like, I am out of your way. You're the shirtless dude. You're going to win this race. My wife, who I owe all this to. Who is also a badass. Oh, man, yes. she's she's better than I am. <clears throat> she got me into this. I have to say that 100%. Um, she motivated me to do this, along with all these other things that are just benefits to running. When I move off the trail for someone faster to go past i expect to thank you mm -hmm. and when i don't get that thank you you're not gonna get it if it's a out and back and out and back you only have so many times of not saying thank you we ended up getting over to uh big hill pond about i don't know it must have been eight o'clock in the morning immediately we parked right there at the gate by uh, on the upside of the dam went down the rocky mountainside towards the boardwalk uh in the dismal swamp that right there going down that first path i, I fell in love with trail running it's been a while since I've been in front of the mic. I think I'm good. Some singing, some karaoke. Really? The standard stuff. Nice. <laughs> That's not standard for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. So when I when I need a refill, how's that going to work? Do you pause it and I you get tell me and, and I'll it? go I'll go get you a beer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You get yeah. eight timeouts. Eight timeouts. <laughs> you, you can only have eight beers an hour, so you got to <laughs> drink wisely. It will be getting interesting at that point. No, no, no it's Charlie. Charlie. He gets a pass. Charlie gets two strikes. Everybody else gets one. Hey, tilapia counts as two timeouts. You got ten more. Cut that out of the video. You can stop and say, hey, 
Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Let's cut that out. This is a safe zone. <laughs> <laughs> we need uh, to put, don't you put a light or something outside yeah, to let people yeah. know? That and you can use you whatever can bathroom there. you want. So if you just walk out there and say, hey, man, I'm a 50-mile runner. She actually helped me. If I could say I had a little bit of a coach, it would be April. I gave April a kiss. It gave me some aid. It, it kind of bolstered me up yeah. a little bit. And then just seeing them kind of revive me, and I was ready to kick ass. I had to throw some iced cookies away the other day because it just got so bad. I, I don't know why my mom bought all these cookies. I was happy to know that they actually came home with us. And so I spent the next week devouring uh, Christmas oh, it cookies. It took you a week? <laughs> well, there was three, three good-sized boxes. Okay. When did you throw them away? Uh, I think, <laughs> like, can we still get to them? You think if we, are they towards the... T- <laughs> that you don't know how close you are to cramping up until you actually stop. The main thing yeah. is don't stop. Just really a civil engineer has such a diverse type of design that they do. It's just such a vast way of doing engineering. Of course, you want to be specialized in whatever you're doing because the public's safety is involved with most everything we do from foundations, especially roadways and bridges. I mean, you have to be held accountable to, we're, he- we're he- held accountable to an oath. Uh, we have an engineering oath that we have to, to go by. We don't have the uh, oath in the fertilizer sling business. <laughs> no. We do in pharmacy, too. We got an oath, yeah, too. You, yeah, I mean, y'all are, like, doing some real shit. The only oath I take is when I get done at the end of a July day, and I'm like, I swear to God, I'm never doing that again. If I get a, a midday run in, it's just like hitting the reset button. It's just like getting to work at 8 o'clock again. I stopped my race. If I'm a minute less from a PR, you are the reason, right? And then I hit the turnaround and I come back and nobody fucking gets out of the way. (laughs) Ever. Don't just say good job. Get out of the way. (laughs) Enough with the good job stuff. Move. We're all doing a good job. (laughs) We showed up in nine degree weather. You know what? 45 other people just told me good job. I want you to move. Yeah, my my boss, he's a runner himself, so he respects what I'm doing. And I think that he also understands that it makes me a better engineer. It clears my head with less stress, becomes a a better thinking mind. Last March, when I went to Utah, we went to climb Mount Olympus. It's, I think, 4,300 vertical feet gain over three and a half miles. I tell you what I did. Breakfast that morning was the blueberries and the yogurt that doesn't have any flavor in it. Uh, <laughs> so I took a couple of honey stingers and I made a little sandwich. Yes. Hey, those <laughs> things are so good. That is awesome. Honey oh, stinger, man. blueberry, yes. and yogurt. Yes. Sandwich. Blueberry sandwich oh, with honey man. stingers? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's great. That's wow. brilliant. You're my new nutritionist. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you coach me on nutrition? I want to be your life coach. You know, in celebration of the people still out there running, I wanted to eat honey stingers. If I was going to sign up for something where I thought I would probably die, I would want to go with you. You you guys welcomed. You feel welcoming. It's a very welcoming, cozy house. And I think that this situation is very uh, conductive to uh, creative thought and, and being open. Boom. I know that you're an Eagle Scout. Yeah. So there's there's some degree of consistency and discipline and hard work ethic. Hard work ethic, I think, would be the biggest contributor. And I think that the hard work ethic kind of enters my life in a lot of places. Uh, my dad, my grandfather, they uh, work their tails off. And I think that that's either been passed down by blood or just from being around it all my life. And I just like to, uh, to work as hard as I can. I feel like I'm kind of, you know, not giving myself the best that I, that I can do uh, if I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm.